Greetings hobbyists, this is Art Stands of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at the new best way to flex objects in Blender. So I've done videos like this before and we've talked about different ways of flexing or deforming objects in Blender. But what I'm going to do in this for simplicity is focus on bending an object. But you could also easily use this for something like a curve deform. Now if we just come in here and we're going to add in a simple deform, there we go and we're going to change this to a bend and we're going to do this in the Z axis and we're going to up the angle and this is going to do absolutely nothing. And that is because, and this is the focus of today's video, what we have to do before we do this is add a load of geometry to this object. At the moment these faces are just solid faces that haven't got the ability to deform because we don't have enough geometry. Now in the case of this object it's a simple rectangle so I can just control an R because this is all made of quads, scroll up, click, and then we're done and we can see what's going on in the background here. So this has flexed this very nicely. And this simple adding of geometry is exactly what we have to do for things like bending, regardless of what you're going to use, be it the native tools in Blender or something that's an external add-on. Now this becomes more problematic if we have a look at this shield here. Now in this, if I just come into face mode, because of the way this has been set up, I can't just add in a load of edge loops here because we've got all of these engons. So on the channel I've talked about various ways of solving this. My general standard is to just hit Q, this is an add-on called Hard Ops, and we can go to Mesh Tools and we can dice this, scroll up to add in a load of extra edges, click, and you'll notice now that if we go into Edge Mode, this has been added to this object, and once again we can just add in our simple deform, and this is going to work perfectly. So this is exactly what we need to do. But this does have a real limiting factor. We have to do this destructively, which means once we've done it once, if we decide that we want this to be smoother, as you can see it's a bit faceted here because I haven't added in lots and lots of dice loops. So if I want to come back and change this, it's a real problem. All we could do with, really, is a way of doing this non-destructively. And that's what this add-on does. So this is just called the Slice Modifier. It's from Chip Waters, and let's just have a look at what it does. So what we're going to do is just shift and A and we're going to type in slice and we get this slice modifier. Now first of all this goes straight into this simplified version. This is not actually a problem, this is a very sensible idea from Chip. But what we can do here is just see how many slices we're putting this into. So I could up this to say let's say 16 and we get 16 of these cuts. We can change the direction if we want to. So that's the Y which is going to be very small and then we've got the Z. I want this on the X as it was before. And we've got this button here that says show cage, which is automatically going to be on. The reason for this is that this is quite operation intensive, which means for slow computers, this might not act very quickly. So this simplified version of it allows us to set everything up relatively quickly and then click this off and we can see that our object is back. Once again, let's go to our simple deform, change that to bend, X, and then we've got this sorted and I can change my angle relatively easily and this will work very nicely. So this is by far and away our better option as far as I'm concerned, mostly because it's non-destructive which gives us a few options. The most important one being that we can come back in here and decide that we want to change this. So I could up this to 64 to take it from this faceted look that was before to this relatively smoothed out look but I can always just quickly bring it back if I choose to just if I want to bring down the effort that my computer's having to make as I do things. Let's just go back to 64. But it has one other very, very important detail. Because this is a modifier, it goes on the modifier stack, which means we can do something we've never been able to do before, at least not easily. This, at the moment, my icon is separate from my shield. I can click here, Control and Plus to Boolean it together. Let's just hide this. But you'll notice this has not been added destructively. Now this is a limitation in the other methods. If I let's say Q and then go to Mesh Tools and then Dice and do that, you'll notice this has only diced the main bit of the shield. It hasn't cut up the icon that's been added to it. I've just undone that so you can see that that's not there anymore. Whereas the Slice modifier is going to be part of this modifier stack. So if I Shift A and Slice and add that in, it's going to slice everything, we get this nice simplified view, let's up that to 16 again, turn off the show cage, and then once again we'll add in our simple deform. But, and this is the key bit, this will still deform 
our object that we've added to it, the Boolean, because it's part of the modifier stack. So this just gives us an insane amount of power. It gives us so many options of what we can do and not have to hope that we've done it right the first time. I could even, if I wanted to, come in here, now this is going to probably be quite slow, and start repositioning this icon and it's all going to work in real time, albeit with the computer having to put in a little bit of effort to be able to change this shape around. I mean, I've wanted something like this for as long as I've known that we can bend objects. So the fact that we've got this now is absolutely great. I'm really, really hyped about this add-on. So thank you very much, Chip, for coming up with this. Speaking of which, there are two ways you can get hold of this add-on. The first of which is that Chip has added this to his Slice It, Bend It pack of tools that's on Superhive. So you can see here we've got this slice modifier now part of it, but you also get this bending tool that goes with it. And it's really nice in terms of controlling what you can do and creating these sort of dome-like shapes if you want to, as well as doing standard deformations just a bit more easily. So that's one option if you want to buy it and know that you're gonna always get updates. The other option, which you'll get much cheaper, is to go to Chip Walters' Patreon page, where for $2 you can pick this up. And obviously you'll get all the other things that he's putting up on the Patreon as well. Now that does mean that if you want to get future updates, you'll need to stay part of the Patreon. So it's up to you what you decide is more important to you. But I would say that that purchase on Superhive is the equivalent to well, nearly 10 months on the Patreon. So totally up to you which you go for. I just wanted to mention both because some people prefer to buy things outright and some people prefer the cheaper option, at least to potentially try it out to begin with. Hopefully you'll find this useful for future projects. If you think you are or you just think this video is worth it, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button. It helps spread the video around. And if you are interested in supporting the channel further, I also have a Patreon page. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. And there you get these videos ad free and a week early and access to the Patreon Discord. Hope to see you in the next video and have a great day.